case, what we're going to find is that we have all these options in InDesign CS5 to create interactive documents in InDesign. So I want to show you how the, what this page looks like and then how I went about creating it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to preview this image. So I'm going to come to File. I'm going to come to Export. Now what we'll find too is that when we export something, we have the option of making it. And for interactive documents, what we're going to find we're going to we're going to export them as SWF files, which we need the Adobe Flash Player to play. Or we can also export them as Adobe PDF Interactive. Well, right now the features I'm going to show you, there are more features when we go for a SWF file. But if you wanted to have an interactive PDF that you were sending to someone, you'd find that there are other um, things to work with. Now, another really interesting place to look, and I'll, I'll look there in a minute, uh, is setting your workspace. So let's just, I'm going to save this. I'm going to replace. It's going to open it up. I'm going to show you what this actually looks like. The elements of design in nature. Enter. Now you also see that over top of here, I made it a rollover, um, and we'll come in a little bit closer, and we can see. Okay, so there we have it again. Here's our enter, and we saw that these images, they all kind of uh, faded in. Now I could change the size of this uh, because it is rather big on my screen, um, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So how did I go about doing this? Well, I started out File, New, Document. Now, what we want to take a look at when we set up our document is that we're going to actually be going for the web, okay? And we're going to see here that we have our page size changes and we're going to really be thinking about pixels. Now, when we look at the size, if I look at my monitor and what size I'm working at right now, if I come to System Preferences, I can see that I believe that my monitor right now is 1440 by 19 by 900 now standard monitors right now are probably at about um 1024 by 760 even maybe even 1260 by 620 now again i'm thinking about creating this for a monitor okay what i did first was i began by um i'll turn this stroke off and my fill color i'm going to open this up and I chose a color somewhere about here. Okay, and then I just created a background shape of this color. So I can come on in, make this my fill. There we have that. Okay, try this again. And we come on in right in here. And we're going to say, okay, all right, hold on for one minute. Actually, let me come on in this way and we'll fill it in here. It should have worked that way too, but things don't always work out as you expect. All right, there we go. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come on in uh, and I'm going to make sure that both of these are turned off um, so I don't get a shape of color around them. Um, Cause the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come on in, make my text box, and actually I'm going to put the text box within these rectangular shapes. I'm going to draw a line, and I can actually turn this shape off. That's what I want to do. I'm going to come on in to my T for my type. Come on in. Now the 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 I worked with a different font. I have plant letters. So I'll come on in here and I'll see them. There they are. And I'm going to write the elements. Now, what I want to do right now is I can take this type and maybe maybe change the color if I'd like to. Um, Now let's face it, it pretty much is black. I'll say okay. I want to make it bigger too. I could come on in, maybe put it at like 30. And then come on in. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Come on in and um, make this a little bit bigger.
right and there we have it the elements is or what we have right here now let's say that I like what I have I want to put this in the center and I want to apply this same effect and type to all of them well I could make a new character style if I open up my character styles all I need to do is with this selected is create a new style okay so actually in order to create the new style though let's just go over this one more time is I need to highlight this image and I already have this one here I'm going to delete that one okay hold on all right, and then what I do is I just click right here, create new style. And I can see it's just names of character style one. I could give it a name if I want to. If I want to double click, I can come on in and name this title page just so I know what it is. And I can see as I go through here, this is the font family. It's set at 30 pixels. Uh, I can also see the, car the color of it. And I'm going to hit OK. So I click this on off. And I come to my next um, text box. So I'm going to put the elements. Now I could just uh, come on over, grab the T for type. I could click this so I know. And I click on here. And okay, that didn't come through. But if I click this, see how that style is automatically assigned to this? All right. So I can come on in again. I want to make sure that this stroke is turned off. So I have the elements, actually, and I want to change that. I want to have the elements of, now I can come on in, I can make an, yet another box of, and I'll put this one right here. And I'm gonna grab my T, come on and click. Now what happens was I had my T and then I clicked that and it worked. Uh, the elements of design in in nature. All right, so I want to come back on in. I want to click my box, make this work a little bit better. And I think that this is working. Now I could work with, you know, where do I want these placed? How do I want these lined up? And I want to keep making sure. So as I come on in here, see how that automatically has that little line around it. I want to make sure that that does not and there we have it. Now I'm going to do one more um, little box right down here and I'm going to make this my enter box. So I'm going to come on in do, 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 and I'm going to grab the T for type. Okay and maybe I'll change this font. Maybe I'll make this font like say 24. Why not? And let's change it to something different. We'll go for the journal font, why not? Why not? And we'll, we can even up it. Okay, so there we have it. Now I can come on in. I can uh, change the size of this box again. Pull this over. All right, so I think we have the idea, and I can put it wherever I want it to be. Again, I'm going to come on in. I'm going to turn this off, and there we have it. Now, let's actually start taking a look at how can we now go ahead and make this a little bit interactive. Well, what we want to do is we want to come on into our workspace. We can come on in here, and we can see that we can actually set our workspace to be interactive. Now, we can also go interactive for a PDF, and there's some interactive features that work when we export it as SWF file, which is needs a flash player to play. And then there's some features that work with an interactive PDF and they're marked pretty clearly, but we're just gonna stick with interactive. We're gonna see that when we do so, we have animation, timing, preview, media, and object states and buttons. Right now, we're gonna take a look at animation. We might take a little peek at timing, preview, and buttons. So I begin, I click the elements, I come, I open up my animation window. Huh. And what I'm going to choose here, I can see that the element is right here. And I'm going to choose, I'm going to say, I want this to fade in. And there we have it. I can even up the seconds if I want to. Maybe I'll make the seconds 1.5 seconds. I'm going to click onto this. I'm going to do the same thing. And you can see there's all of these other options. I'm going to say, I want this to fade in. And again, I'll set this to 
1.5 seconds. Now I'm not going to have it loop, but I could have it loop if I wanted to. I'm going to say, okay, I want this one to also fade in. And I'm going to set this one at 1.5 seconds too. Click my next one. And design in nature. Oh, look at that. I guess I already did that one too. I must have done all three. I have this one fade in. Okay. Now, this one will be a little bit different. We're going to change this. We're going to say we want this one to fly in from bottom. Bum, da, da, da. And we'll make this happen in about 1.5 seconds too. And let's preview it. So I'll hit preview. And what we'll see is we're going to see this little preview right down in here. I hit play. We see the elements of design and nature enter. Ba -ba -da -bum. There it is. All right, so let's actually take a look at how we go about making this into a button. Next thing we're going to do actually is we're going to come or open up a button. And what we want to do is we want to convert this to a button. So I have it selected. I'm going to say convert object to a button. And there it is. Now, what I want to do now is I want to say, okay, on the rollover state, I click this. I come, I get my T, I can highlight this. Maybe I'm going to change the color on the rollover state. So when someone rolls over, this is the color it will turn. Now, maybe I want to click back onto here. And I want to say, huh, okay, on the click, what color do I want it to turn on the click? Well, I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to come on in here and choose another color. Go for something like that. Why not? All right, so now we can see that we have that all done. Now, I could also come on in here and I could add an action. I could say, okay, on click, I want to add an action and I want to say, go to next page. Now, I talked a little bit about um, how there's different options for SWF versus PDF only. And we can see that this, as we come on into the buttons that these things are clearly marked. When we use PDF, there's only certain features we can use. Now all these ones at the top we can use, but these ones are for SWF um, and these ones are for um, all SWF and then these ones are PDFs. So I'm gonna just say on click, go to next page. Now I don't have a next page to go to just yet. So why don't we just add a next page real quickly. So if I come to my, my pages, I can just click right here, add a new page. So there we have it. Let's come back to page one. Let's export this and look at it big. So I come to file, export, and I want to export it for an SWF. I'm going to name this one elements two, save. Now I can see that this is the size of it. 1024 by 768, and we will say OK. The elements of design in nature. Enter. All right, so I roll over, I click, and it goes to the next page. All right. So there we have it, the beginning of working um, with interactive documents. So in the next video, I'll do a little bit more um, on how to set up a multi-page interactive document. Thanks so much for listening.